Hey there, not Becca here from Inside the Square. I'm Phil, a brand strategist, a Squarespace website designer with well over 100 projects under my belt, and an avid consumer of Becca's tutorials to make my client websites great. In true April Fool's fashion, we have swapped roles on each other's YouTube channels today. So I'm swinging in with my own tutorial with the five best CSS code snippets that I use on every single Squarespace website, and you should too. All of the codes shared are linked or listed in the description below, and I'm going to now go ahead and share my screen to show you exactly how these codes work so that you can use them on your own website to make it uniquely yours. Let's get started. The first code snippet, shout out to Lucy, I learned this from. We're gonna open the CSS panel. You'll be able to take a look here at root. So it's listed here under where I would put color code. Uh, the first snippet uses the root function and this gives hex codes names. So look at this closely. Root is global, so site-wide for CSS. This way, when I'm writing CSS or sourcing it, you can just use names instead of hex codes. So it's easier first of all, to remember. And it also means that if you or a client wanna ever update the colors in the future, you can just change the hex codes here in one place and you don't have to go through all of the CSS. It's also worth mentioning that lightest, you'll see here, right, and the different color schemes that I'm using, this matches lightest and others here on site styles for Squarespace. So there really is no opportunity for confusion. Moving right along to our second snippet, I'll go back here and take a little look at the CSS. I use this on every single website. Uh, that's this scroll behavior, a smooth scroll. So that's for anchor links on a page. So for example, when I hit this contact button, it smoothly scrolls all the way down here for someone to fill in the contact information. On every site that I'm building, every full site, we typically do a one page site that goes live while we work on the full site. And I just love for anchor links to have this scroll, uh, this smooth scroll behavior. Now, Becca has an awesome tutorial on how to actually add those anchor links. I suggest following this. She also answers some custom questions in the comments. So we'll make sure that we get linked to this tutorial. But when I jump back here, you're gonna wanna make sure that when you're adding your anchor links, so you would add it rather than as text, you would add this likely as a code block and it's gonna be written in this way. So giving it an ID tells up here when you uh, add a hashtag, there you go, that's gonna tell it to pop down there and by having that smooth scroll in there, it's gonna do it nicely. The final piece to making sure that this anchor link works, go under settings, advanced, code injection, and right down here in the footer, you're gonna wanna make sure you have this script line, uh, jQuery, to make sure that that works. Again, follow this tutorial that Becca has already created because as we know, she is the queen. The next two code snippets are purely stylistic. It's when I'm trying to recreate a brand that my designer has created for a client and try to really bring that to life using Squarespace. And I've had years of practice doing this and certainly found little tricks along the way that I'm gonna share with you. You're getting a look at the PDF that we would put together for a client that has hired us to design a brand identity. So there's no guessing here, right? We've got the five colors that I'll create uh, with the site styles. We've got the typography that is selected to Typically, we try to stick within uh, what is available in Squarespace and Adobe fonts. And then here, this is where things get interesting, is my designer will actually conceptualize how a website should look. And I will take cues from this and actually recreate this on Squarespace, often time with Becca's tutorials on custom CSS. So right away, I look at this and know, okay, Squarespace allows you to have a one pixel width line. I'm going to need two pixels here to create this, as well some custom coding for the button. So if we hop over to Squarespace, you'll see some of those similar styles recreated here from what we would call the brand board. I'll draw your attention under the CSS panel to this little rule, the horizontal line rule thicker. So it's just taking that horizontal rule and increasing the height to two pixels and then marking that as important so that then I can uh, you know, break out of that standard one pixel width on Squarespace and give that a nice style. Now I am happy that in Fluid Engine, when we go back here to site style, 
styles and click over to buttons. I love this new option to outline. We had to use custom CSS for this previously, but now it can be actually set as a style, so no need to use CSS. But still, that horizontal line ruled. They don't give us the ability to change this yet. I'm sure that's on their product roadmap. Another thing that kind of boggles my mind that they don't let you change this is adjusting any of your text styles. Obviously, you can set a header and a paragraph font, but even from there, I find that somewhat limiting. So on almost every website, I am customizing uh, the third paragraph font, okay? So that an instance of that would be right here. A lot of times, I am you know extending the letter spacing here, so 0.2 EM, I'm making that uppercase, and then I go thicker on the font weight. This is nice because it gives you the ability to just change one of those styles. Typically, I'm keeping it the same font, so you won't find that adjusted here. But again, just the third paragraph, and this is a specific line of code that you would use to call that out. Again, when we go back to our site styles and look at fonts, and I'll click down here to paragraph, I'm not able to make specific adjustments for one of the styles. So that snippet of code is gonna be very helpful for you. And finally, I'll click back here. We will go to our custom CSS, and I will show you the last snippet that I'm gonna show you today, which has to do with the footer. So I have learned over the years that a lot of times it doesn't make sense to show the footer on mobile. It just makes sense to end with that strong call to action. The footer, I don't know, Squarespace makes it a little bit messy, so what I often do is hide that footer, and if you're looking for code to do that, you can see it right here. This code basically says, when we drop below this width and we hide the footer, I have found that it's just a nicer, cleaner experience for for users to not have that footer on mobile. So I typically hide it. We just covered a lot in this video. Every single one of these codes is linked or listed in the description below. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give Becca a like and a comment. Let us know which of the five snippets that you plan on using, or maybe you already use them on your own sites. And for more practical advice on branding, positioning, building and promoting your brand, be sure to check out my YouTube channel, also linked in the description. And of course, make sure you are subscribed here to this channel. Becca posts a new tutorial every single week and you will not wanna miss it. She is the queen and I I love her. Thank you so much for watching this. And more importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now.